All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. It's 11 o'clock. Um, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the DriveWorks, uh, DriveWorks webinar. We are so glad that you guys were able to take time out of your busy schedules today and join us. Um, this webinar will be recorded. So if you would like to share with anyone who was not able to attend or reference any of the information that we go over, we will be following up with the recording. Um, so I'm going to give some quick introductions. My name is Morgan McCandless. I am an account manager for our manufacturing division and have been with TPM for a little over two years now. And prior to TPM, I was a teacher and was in the classroom for almost seven years. So this is definitely a different space for me, but I have absolutely loved working um, in the manufacturing space and honestly feel super honored to work with such talented people. Um, and speaking of talented people, I would like to introduce Joel Hanneman, who will be leading the webinar today. He is one of our senior technical consultants and our DriveWorks experts here at TPM. He has his degree in mechanical engineering and worked as a design and manufacturing engineer. And from there, he transitioned to manufacturing and operations management, um, which took up the bulk of his career. And then during that time, he introduced DriveWorks to a manufacturing company and has been using it for about five years now. And he joined us at TPM about one year ago. On the agenda today, I will go over briefly uh, a little bit about TPM. And then Joel is going to jump into the presentation, give you some context on DriveWorks and you know what it is, the landscape of it, give you some uh, information and details on the tool. And then at the end, we'll give you some resources that you can use and play around with to learn a little bit more. Um, and then at the very end, we will do a Q&A session. All right. Uh, before we jump into it, I did want to share a brief overview about TPM. Uh, for those of you who might not be familiar with us, we work predominantly in the manufacturing and the architectural engineering and construction space. We do have multiple divisions. Um, as you can see on the graphic to the right, we provide data management, support and training services. We have a hardware division um, that sells 3D printers, scanners, copiers, plotters. We also have a printing and graphics division that offers signage and vehicle wrap. Um, so we do a little bit of everything, um, but with everything that we do here at TPM, we definitely don't want to just sell things to our customers. Um, we really believe in, in a partnership and want to provide you all with the best solutions and the right technology um, to ultimately make you all successful in the long run. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Joel, you can take it away. All right. Thanks, Morgan. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks again for your time. Um, I took a browse at the attendee list uh, this morning just to kind of see what kind of uh, crowd we've got gathered today. Um, you know, we've run a series of DriveWorks webinars uh, over recent times, and they've, they've each had a different different flavor to them. This one is trying to make the connection between DriveWorks and general, like, business automation and digital transformation type topics. Um, this one's got maybe some more broader appeal and it it shows in, in the group we have collected today. We've got folks uh, in education, we have folks in uh, defense, we have uh, some like uh, companies in the AEC space, kind of architecture and construction. Uh, we've got capital equipment manufacturers, uh, process uh, equipment manufacturers, uh, discrete product manufacturers. So it's a wide range, um, which I think it's really indicative of, of what DriveWorks is all about. Um, and I, hopefully your, your main takeaway after, after spending an hour with us is, is just seeing that DriveWorks is just a very uh, uh, comprehensive and capable piece of software that really has a lot of broad applicability to all things business, okay? Now, uh, th throughout the presentation, I will refer to manufacturing quite a bit. Um, you know, DriveWorks was kind of born out of uh, the SOLIDWORKS uh, you know, ecosystem of, of CAD software. Um, but over the decades, it's uh, kind of achieved broader broader appeal. Uh, but manufacturing is still like the most concrete way to talk about a lot of the important aspects of what DriveWorks does and the capabilities uh, it enables. So, you know, I, I will cite manufacturing as 
an example environment, but that doesn't have to be the case. And we have use cases of customers using DriveWorks that have nothing to do with manufacturing, nothing to do with CAD or SOLIDWORKS um, that, that still find a lot of uh, value in the application. So, so if you're not manufacturing, don't worry, this presentation is still for you. Okay. That being said, we're, we're going to kind of jump into the manufacturing arena and everyone's going to put our factory hats on and, and imagine uh, a day in the life of, of working in manufacturing. Okay. But much like any business, uh, you know, most businesses had some sort of business system. Okay. And manufacturing is a, is a particular uh, beast of a business. It's just a lot going on, a lot of data, materials. Uh, a lot of activity and just information to to uh, organize and, and wrangle. Uh, and then in particular, if there's like a configurable nature of the business or the product, you know, every day is not the same. Uh, every day you're doing something slightly different. It might follow a theme. It might follow some common, uh, you know, common traits. Uh, but in fact, every day is just a little different. Um, that's that's it's when these three things intersect that uh, business becomes a challenge, a real challenge to, uh, to manage, to, to grow, to, to keep organized and, and really feel like you've got a, a firm grip on the operation uh, as you look into the future. So a little bit about that. Um, at, you know, at, again, a lot of kind of manufacturing or maybe engineering specific topics here, but I think we can all relate to it somehow. But uh, if you've been in business a while, then you, you kind of are aware of various legacy solutions out there for just managing the business. Um, in the CAD environment in particular, um, you know, managing CAD files from one job to another or one project to another, you know, often, often we copy and paste, you know, find an old job that was similar enough, copy it, paste it, and create the new one. Uh, if you've got any experience with CAD, you know that that sounds great, but there's all sorts of pitfalls. Uh, we can use things like configurations to try to manage uh, various options within a product line that, of course, has uh, hits a wall pretty quick and, and has some limitations. Then the other tools in, in CAD systems like variables in context modeling that, uh, you know, are, are fine tools in of themselves. Uh, they were developed for certain types of problems, but really, if you have a, a truly configurable product or need, uh, they really just don't hold up uh, over time. So uh, a lot of companies have a huge reliance on Excel, you know, either treating Excel as some sort of form, a place to collect information from a user, uh, try to treat Excel as some kind of a database. Uh, it, it's just a tool that most, you know, virtually every company has. And if it's a tool that you have, that's what you're going to use. And we've had customers come to us with a 50 tab uh, spreadsheet uh, well, this is how we do business. You know, start at tab one, and by the time we ship, we're on tab 50. And, um, you know, it's a great starting point, but of course, you know, you can't, at the end of the day, you can't really run a business off of Excel. Um, so that's a limitation. Uh, some companies just rely on tribal knowledge. You know, they really don't have any kind of particular solution. It's just, you know, the, the information's in the ether or in an in individual's uh, minds and experiences, and and there's really no place to go to, uh, you know, this, get information uh, in of itself. Uh, ERP is probably the most common uh, business system out there. Uh, naturally, ERP uh, is is, is uh, folks attempt to leverage it uh, to do kind of adjacent uh, uh, business tasks outside of just running accounting and financial functions and managing materials. Uh, so some ERPs do have configurators or additional modules that can facilitate kind of a more complicated business. Um, but of course, folks run into limitations with that as well. Uh, of course, there is just custom programming. Um, hire a programmer to, you know, give, give them your wish list and, and have them whip up some custom code. And there you have it. You've got a custom application, some source code, and, and you know, it'll function somehow. Of course, that becomes a problem when that, that person is no longer available or this, the code is out of date or you have a, an update to your CAD platform that the code didn't consider. Um, there are all sorts of uh, inherent weaknesses and in, in sort of a relying on a, a custom programming. Uh, but at the end of the day, most companies find themselves working in, in kind of a hodgepodge uh, environment, right? Um, something that Rube Goldberg, a uh, famous cartoonist, would have been proud of. You know, what, what's the most complicated method? you can come up with to solve what, what 
you know, you might think of as being a simple problem. Okay. So usually companies are experiencing some combination of one through five, right? And it, it's, it's that hodgepodge approach that leads to things just not ever working quite right. Okay. So what does quite right feel like? It's, uh, you know, first and foremost, it's very manual, right? So that means it's reliant on humans. Uh, it, it can uh, be time consuming. It can be error prone. Uh, it, it can involve repetitive entry of information in various systems. Um, but most of the time it comes down to time and error. Okay. Uh, most companies these days are still working on, on very uh, document you know, centric processes, you know, whether it be a, an actual physical piece of paper or, you know, a virtual, you know, a, a digital file, a PDF or an Excel file. Um, but once data is in a document, it's sort of stuck there. It's stuck in time. It's stuck in that place. Uh, it can be uh, stuck as an email attachment. It can be on someone's desktop. Who knows where that critical piece of information is inside the business, if not in multiple places at the same time. Um, for manufacturing companies, especially those that are CAD centric, uh, you know, none of the none of the the uh, legacy solutions really have any kind of inherent or native uh, connectivity with CAD. And if you're a manufacturer of configurable product, that CAD data is the lifeblood of your company. So if that's not um, easily accessible and leverageable, then that's obviously a core problem. Okay. And at the end of the day, uh, companies can just find themselves facing the reality that at this point, they, they don't have a firm and proper uh, placement of value on data, okay? Data just isn't tr hasn't been treated traditionally as something that is just ultra valuable and, and is the business in of itself, right? And so if your data is not robust, uh, if it's not responsive to uh, current events, if it's not accessible to the right people at the right time and it can't be leveraged and made to work for you, if all these things aren't in place, then you really just don't have good data or good data practices, okay? And then what are you to do from there? Okay, so we're in the age of software. We have been for some time. Uh, so there, there are a variety of software solutions out there. Uh, I've mentioned ERP before. That's a common place to look um, for some way to, to manage all this data better, right? ERP is a data heavy pro uh, application, right? It, it's got all, numerous uses of data. Um, and so uh, various uh, firms have, you know, bolt-on or modular uh, configurator type um, options that that are okay. I mean, they get you started, but if again, if you have a truly configurable product or business, then uh, they start to fall short pretty quickly. Uh, there are standalone configurators out there. Again, I, I put configurators in, in bunny air quotes because, um, I think as we'll see compared to DriveWorks uh, and what it can do, uh, configurator can mean a lot of different things, right? Uh, if you go onto a website, like, you know, uh, you know, Chevrolet.com and spec out a car, you can pick colors, you can pick trim, or maybe you go to Nike and, and you know, spec out your, your new shoes, or you go to Amazon, you can pick from a variety of uh, colors of, or, or sizes of a product. That can be called configuration, right? Maybe you get to choose between 10, 10 things, 10 items, uh, but how deeply are you actually able to engage with that product? Um, most folks on this call, I'm sure, are in situations where uh, they have much more complicated situations, okay? Again, there's the custom programming route, which uh, I guess you could say is supremely uh, uh, flexible <laughs> because you're creating your own thing out of nothing, but uh, of course, custom programming has its own pitfalls as well. So, but there's turns out there's another option that kind of combines the benefits of of all these solutions and really just sort of natively uh, eliminates all all the the pitfalls. And that's DriveWorks. So as we're going to see um, in subsequent slides, uh, DriveWorks is the ultimate in CAD automation, specifically for SolidWorks. SolidWorks is the preeminent uh, uh, CAD. 3D modeling CAD solution on the market, uh, hugely popular, used in all sorts of industries. Um, DriveWorks is a gold partner of SolidWorks and is just uh, at the leading edge of uh, uh, being the, auto the, chose the preferred automation tool for SolidWorks. DriveWorks is online ready out of the box. It's integrations ready out of the box. 
literally every single thing that you can touch inside the software is completely customizable. Um, not configurable, but customizable. All of this capability comes without any kind of code. There's a little bit of syntax, but we would call this a no code environment, which really means that it 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 sort of democratizes the, the process of implementing uh, your own solution, right? It, you can think of it as a do-it-yourself um, type strategy. Okay, so it's, it really is a truly all-in-one solution, uh, tackling all the challenges, eliminating all the pitfalls that uh, many of you have probably experienced over the years. So adopting DriveWorks, implementing it, uh, it, it kind of relieves you of having to contort your, yourself and your business to your software. Instead, now you can have your software be built around exactly around your business needs. Okay. Okay. So let's get into what DriveWorks is all about. Um, we often refer to DriveWorks in three pillars. We 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 see this vast array of functionality, um, and we have to organize it somehow, right? And so we we refer to them as pillars. These are the core uh, kind of functional domains of of the software and kind of separate domains where they can be put to use. Okay, the first of course is design automation. We will dig into what that means in a few moments. Second pillar is all things product configurator or CPQ, okay? And the third is, well, frankly, just everything else. Um, we will elaborate on all these things. Now I will say that we have uh, customers that use implement DriveWorks and, and take advantage of all three pillars. Some just you take advantage of one pillar or two. So, you know, again, you don't need to be a CAD user. You don't have to be a SOLIDWORKS user. You don't even have to be a manufacturer to take advantage of the other two pillars and vice versa. Okay. So it's a very uh, flexible software, modular software, and really there's all sorts of opportunity to put it to use just for your needs. All right. Well, let's jump into uh, design automation, see what that's all about. If I were to break design automation down into some just core steps, some kind of intellectual uh, uh, steps that you will propagate through to, to successfully achieve uh, true design automation. The first thing you got to do is create and institutionalize your design intent. Okay, design intent, just like your data, can live in any nook and cranny of the business. It could be in an engineer's mind. It could be in a binder. It could be in some source code. It could be in an Excel file. It could be on an online catalog. Uh, who knows where, you know, if, if you were to think about what it takes to design any given version of your product, how many different places do you have to go to find information, to find a formula, to find a value, whatever it is. <clears throat> if it's more than one, <laughs> that that's a lot. OK, so we, we need to gather all that information, all the insight and kind of dump it in one big bucket. And then once we kind of have it all in one view, we can we can figure out how to institutionalize it. How do we make it actionable, right? How do we structure all this data and all this insight to make it, um, <clears throat> to put it in a, in a good position to begin to think about automation, okay? Uh, a, a subsequent step is actually creating a design process if there isn't one already. In DriveWorks terms, a design process really kind of means a form, a user interface, right? Uh, uh, DriveWorks is an application, users interact with the application, uh, and they do so using a form and a form would be built uh, custom to your needs, featuring your branding, your uh, your uh, colors. If, if your if your design process requires two pages or 100 pages, that's up to you. Um, tr truly, the design process can be uh, curated to your your very own needs. Um, Everything about this uh, form environment is completely customizable. Setting it up is a lot like using PowerPoint. Okay, you, you kind of drag things around on the screen, put them where you want them. You can adjust the colors, the fonts. Uh, but beyond that, we can control, uh, we can create a very dynamic experience. Okay, uh, the form can be very reactive. It can be reactive to uh, selections that were made uh, uh, earlier on in, in the uh, design process. It can be reactive to who's logged into the system. It can be reactive to the customer name, the day of the week, so on and so forth, right? So again, it's it's whatever your business needs to to, to fully uh, enable a user to, to 
capture all the information needed to to fulfill the job, then then that's what can be built um, in the DriveWorks form environment. <clears throat> okay, once that's in place, along with that institutionalized design intent, then we actually start automating. Okay, uh, DriveWorks has a, uh, a individual module that you, we often describe as the uh, it's just the machine sitting in the corner, right? It's got uh, SolidWorks installed, DriveWorks installed, uh, access to all your files, and it just sits there waiting for instructions, okay? Waiting for orders. So a user logs into the website, uh, creates a quote request. Um, the machine in the corner is sitting there waiting for that request to come through, comes to life as soon as it does, produces all the data, um, sends it out, distributes it as needed, and that's it all without any human interaction, right? It's, it's kind of headless in that respect. It's actually quite intelligent, but it's it's unmanned, it's it's headless, it just, it's there waiting waiting to perform, <clears throat> okay? Now, there's a whole lot more to understanding about CAD automation, and, and we can certainly circle back to that later in the presentation. But moving on to the next domain, and I'm, I'm gonna not convey a whole lot of detail on, configure, on all things configurator or CPQ, uh, at this moment, because I'm going to save that to a, uh, a demo review on the DriveWorks site. But, you know, short story is imagine taking all of that institutionalized design intent, having a, a guided design process, having this capability to just automatically create information and content and documents on the fly, uh, and then put that online, put that in the hands of your salespeople, put that in the hands of your customers. In, in the in the in the public, you know, up to you. Once once all of this capability is now made accessible via the inter internet, uh, imagine what the possibilities are. So uh, some companies use it to kind of connect their whole supply chain. Uh, some folks take advantage of having a a website that's like nicely designed and curated to just have a very specific uh, guided selling process and design process. Um, so again, we'll, we'll bring more life to this topic through through a demo in a few minutes. Okay, and then there's the everything else pillar, that third pillar. And this is what most folks that are learning about drivers for the first time didn't really expect to see coming, right? Most most people come to learn about DriveWorks because they're, they're in manufacturing, they're in CAD, they're using SolidWorks, they're considering SolidWorks, and they just think CAD automation is sort of this lead in topic. But uh, inevitably, we come to this everything else part and it opens up everyone's eyes, right? This is where DriveWorks really starts to shine and really uh, enables it to become really more of a platform for your business than just a, a standalone tool that some folks touch here and there, okay? So what DriveWorks does is it fills interstitial space. Interstitial space, kind of a nerdy term, but it's actually, I think, a perfect term. Uh, interstitial space, think of a cup of sand, okay? That you can have a, a full cup of sand, yet you can still pour water into it. That means that there is unfilled space, right? Interstitial space is the gaps between everything else in the picture, right? Now, instead of a cup of sand, think of a cup of rocks. And where the cup is your business, okay? And the rocks are individual uh, components of the business, whether they be people, departments, different business systems, uh, spreadsheets, uh, different factory. I mean, they, conceptually, the, the rocks can represent all these disparate items, um, functional items of the business. And, you know, unlike sand and, and like these rocks, most of these individual components are sort of base, you know, barely touching each other. Like one rock is barely touching the other just kind of tangentially kind of resting in place. Oh, so Brad, uh, and, and it's just the connections between rocks is very fragile. Okay. So much like, you know, a human entering a value into a spreadsheet and then another human reading that value from the spreadsheet and entering it to some other system. Uh, there's fragility there, right? There's opportunity for human error. There's opportunity for uh, that task to not be completed or completed on time or, who knows what? I mean, problems galore. We've all experienced them before. And that's because those two rocks are barely touching. So what does DriveWorks do? It's it's the water that gets poured in and connects all these items pretty much completely. It wraps them all, forms cohesive, robust connections that just sort of eliminate the fragility of 
sort of your day-to-day -day operations in a business. So we're talking about controlling the who, what, when, how, why, uh, of how really any particular kind of activity, activity happens uh, in the organization, okay? So when you take a step back, look at the opportunities in CAD, look at the opportunities to uh, have a, a web-based system. Uh, really, we're talking about digital transformation. And so digital transformation can be mean different things for different organizations, but at its core, it's the ability to manage data uh, and hold those three principles uh, dear. It's data's got to be robust, accessible, and uh, responsive, okay? And so what we'll see is that DriveWorks takes care of all those things in an all-in-one uh, type solution. Okay, how does it do that? The key is integration. Okay, uh, integration can happen in a number of ways, right? It can be just uh, simply passing of text files like an XML or Excel or text file, CSV. Uh, you know, most applications can export such a thing and import such a thing and vice versa. So that's kind of like your, your first level of, of, of having two systems talk or communicate at least. Uh, then there's working with databases, all manner of databases, SQL servers, probably the most uh, uh, common and, and most uh, other business systems out there or tend to use SQL Server, but uh, that the database type doesn't really matter. Uh, so communicating via database is sort of your next level of, of capability and intelligence. Uh, DriveWorks has a growing list of uh, third-party application uh, add-ins or plugins, right? That really kind of eliminate the need for you know all sorts of manual setup to, to establish communications. It just happens kind of literally out of the box, okay? Now, if, if that doesn't cut it, if you have a very particular need that, that the out of the box uh, capabilities doesn't serve, um, you know, all things API uh, still apply and, you know, virtually any problem can be solved somehow, some way, but, so when you look at this as a whole, DriveWorks puts itself in the middle of all these applications, uh, typical to any business, and just becomes like a very robust and comprehensive piece of middleware, right? Um, one of the applications that it happens to integrate with is SolidWorks. So it kind of just incorporates that, that, uh, that CAD component um, seamlessly, okay? So that's, that's sort of the what about everything else, but here's the how. Here's kind of like the real good stuff that separates DriveWorks from just about any other piece of software you've seen. Uh, I mentioned before that DriveWorks is 100% customizable, and it is at its core. Um, out of the box, DriveWorks is empty. There's nothing in there. That's because it's what it is to become is what you will build it to be, right? Another way of thinking about DriveWorks is um, – Let's say your goal is to build a custom house for yourself. Um, you know, pick your favorite big box uh, store to get tools, pick Home Depot, walk in there, it's got all your materials, all your tools, all your fasteners, safety equipment. You can rent rent uh, uh, all sorts of equipment. You can get your plants. I mean, everything's there, right? And you may not know how to buy a house, uh, build a house, but everything that you need is inside that the four uh, walls of that building. Okay, DriveWorks is a lot, basically the same way. It's a vast collection of tools that enables, much like Home Depot, a, a very do-it-yourself uh, path forward to, to getting started. Not to say that everyone ought to think of themselves as an electrician or a plumber, but you know, to the extent that you think that there's a do-it-yourself type um, uh, uh, appetite uh, within the business, um, then DriveWorks is absolutely the, the application for you. So uh, this slide on the right here is showing uh, what a form looks like before you get started. A couple slides ago, I showed a form that associated with the design process. Uh, that was, you know, a developed form, but before it was created, it looked like this, just like starting a blank uh, PowerPoint slide. Okay. Uh, let's see. Every literally everything that we touch is dynamic. It's responsive, and it the the underlying behavior of the activity is completely up to you. Uh, that is all underpinned by the ability to set up workflows. Okay, so you know, creating a servicing a quote request, right, isn't just a like a, a thing that happens in the moment. You know, there, there's a beginning and an end, right? That may not be evident to the user, but it's certainly evident to the business, right? The user might think, oh, I just fill out the form and click request, and it's done. Well, it turns out <laughs> there's a lot more to handling a quote 
than just simply creating it, right? It's got to be processed. It's got to be go into some sort of queue. It's got to be reviewed. It might get rejected. It might get approved. You know, a very rudimentary hypothetical workflow for a, a basic coding process. But the point is that the process, the, the workflow has to exist, right? And it can exist in any manner that uh, you see fit. How do you run your business? If you can articulate that, then we then that that same workflow can be established quite simply in DriveWorks. And as I'll keep referring to the fact that there's no programming in any of this, it's all very drag and drop like, you know, no program required, WYSIWYG, uh, use your mouse to kind of set things up, make the connections and uh, start instituting all the details, okay? Kind of a finer level of control is uh, something that we call macros, but you can think of uh, if the prior slide was it was a workflow, kind of a high level uh, capture of how the business operates, then a, a process would be much more granular. How exactly does something happen? When the user clicks the request quote button, when they're done filling out the form, what exactly happens in that moment? The data gets saved to a database. The sales manager gets an email. Uh, on uh, the sales manager's dashboard, a, a new entry is created saying, hey, new, qu new quote to, uh, to review. And that new quote is highlighted in blue until the manager assigns it to a sales rep. You know, if, if those are the exact things that need to happen at that very moment, that would be captured as a, uh, a macro, as you see here. So back to the Home Depot analogy, how exactly, what tools do you need? to perform a certain step. If you're cutting a piece of lumber, you might need a couple of different saws with a, a specific blades. And then when you when you address the, the piece of lumber, uh, which cut do you make first followed by the next cut? Do you need to measure? Do you might need to measure again? Does someone need to be notified if you cut it wrong? Like these are all very uh, specific action items that again, you use your mouse to establish. You, you WYSIWYG your way into the very specific Thing that you need to achieve. And of course, there's all sorts of logic to build along the way, all completely customizable uh, for a truly uh, unique uh, solution that's tuned just for your business. Okay. I say no program required. That's pretty much true. Uh, you, you might dispute that if you would, if you would consider uh, writing a basic formula uh, into an Excel cell is considered programming, then I guess there's a little bit of programming. But I, I don't really consider that programming. That's more just like syntax, right? So if you can write an if statement in Excel, if you can write a comp, you know, a, a moderately difficult mathematical equation in Excel, then you've got the, the aptitude and the capabilities to institute all manner of logic in DriveWorks, okay? Kind of a, a cheeky little example here, but if, if you understand the, the essence of this if statement, then you're you're ready to to hit to hit it. Okay. So just want to emphasize that it's it's really not that technical. Okay. And I would say that the you know most driver experts come out of uh uh you know they're they're not programmers. They're not like they don't have like big IT backgrounds, they don't have uh you know comp sci degrees, anything of that sort. Uh maybe by distribution most most folks come out of like an engineering type background or a design background, um, but really it's just not, not that technical. Okay, so once all that data is in place, why not make it work for you? Why not just make it, make it evident? Like how's your business doing? How are your processes working? How's, how's the various functions performing? When the data, when when you have a, uh, an application in place that can talk to any old system, access data in a database, <clears throat> receive data from users, uh, reach across the internet to get more data, like you have all, you have like mission control is basically available to you, right? So why not create a dashboard? Why not track your KPIs? Uh, you could put this up in like the break room wall, or this could be like your, your second monitor, uh, just to know how, how things are working in your business. <clears throat> It's worth mentioning that DriveWorks as a company uses DriveWorks to run itself, right? They have an accounting package and they have a CRM package and they use those. They keep those applications separate because they're good at what they do. But everything else virtually that the company does, they use DriveWorks to do. OK, so 
great example of using kind of off the shelf applications to do specifically what they're designed to do and not trying to stress them much beyond that. And basically let DriveWorks do all the heavy lifting. And, you know, a, a dashboard such as this is something that anyone can relate to having real time data available to you that's meaningful and helps you run your uh, the day to day um, workings of your business. Okay, well, that's a, a very uh, quick overview of, of sort of the, a very high level um, reveal of the of the total spectrum of all that DriveWorks uh, can offer, and it's pretty wide, right? And so now we're going to take a look at some online demos to try and piece that together in real terms, and and just highlight a, a, a few examples. Okay. So let's see, there is a uh, publicly available website that you are all welcome to, to browse to. It's driveworkslive.com. This is a an exceptional demo site, okay? And before I get into any given demo, I just wanna point out a few important uh, elements of, of this site. There's, there's a lot to it. Uh, there's an example of what we consider an embedded configurator. It, it's a simple example, but it's there. And it just demonstrates how cleanly and, and natively a a custom configurator can be incorporated into a website and made available to the masses. <clears throat> Below that are, I think, 20 plus industry examples. You know, we have doors, uh, stair units, cupboards, electrical enclosures, all, all sorts of products, right? Uh, below that, CPQ. What is CPQ? Configure price quote. Uh, a, a very nice, uh, clear explanation of what CPQ really means and what it means in the world of DriveWorks. Okay, finally, if you wanna dig a little deeper, you wanna understand how is all the, how are all these wonderful things possible, there is the uh, sort of technology showcase. Okay, these are all more demos. So if you are wondering, gee, how do we, you're talking about integrations a lot, how does that work? Well, open this up and explore. It's a full on interactive tutorial slash demo of all things integration technology and DriveWorks. <clears throat> Guess what? What you're, what you're using while, while on the website doing this demo, this is DriveWorks. They used DriveWorks to demo DriveWorks. Pretty neat. Okay, so again, <clears throat> the content of this demo, the inner workings of it, it might relate to CAD, but it isn't CAD. This really does not have to do anything with, uh, <clears throat> uh, with having a CAD based product and such. I mean, it's just, if you have a need to have information online, have it be very data rich, interactive, dynamic, uh, these demos uh, showcase that brilliantly. Get more information on automating CAD, uh, uh, workflows, forms, rule writing. If you're not convinced that rule writing is, uh, is the thing for you, uh, I encourage you to check out that demo as well. Okay. So uh, we got a few more minutes here to dedicate to demos. So I'll, I'll introduce a few just as a compare and contrast uh, opportunity here. So we're going to enter a, a demo for a fictitious HVAC company. You know, a, a cap capex type of piece of equipment, big old system that would probably live on the roof of a giant Amazon warehouse or something of that effect. Okay, so here we are on a website about to configure a very complicated piece of equipment, right? Um, and, you know, agree or disagree. I don't know much about HVACs. I don't know how sensical this, this, uh, uh, the, 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 the propagation of the form experience is to a real HVAC company, but I will say that, uh, it has, the demo has been set up with certain things in mind. So they're going to ask a very fundamental question first, right? Are, are, is the connection mechanism between all these various modules is it going to be flanged or screwed? And is the air, uh, H, uh, the airflow going to be high or low? Because these things matter, right? Downstream decisions based on these choices will start to, to change, have different uh, meaning, different uh, interpretations and such. Okay, so if I pick a maximum airflow rating, then that will probably limit my choices on some things and open up you know, different selections uh, that I won't even know about as a user, but they will be happening behind the scenes. So you know, key questions are being asked first. Then uh, we have to pick an entry module, kind of makes sense. You got to start from the front, I guess. 
Now, what you do from there is up to you, right? I don't know what makes sense as far as the order of operations for a, a HVAC module, but there, this co hypothetical company is going to leave it up to me to configure this exactly at, as I see fit. Okay. And again, we have what this demo is showing is taking a very complicated product, a very substantial product that might have tens of thousands of items in the bill of materials uh, and reducing it down to something that someone like me who knows nothing about the product can actually start to design. Okay. Uh, so let's see, heat recovery. We're going to enter a, a, a little sub configurator here to make some choices. We're going to add that to our system. We'll maybe pick a filter, add that to the system, so on and so forth. Okay. And we can keep adding more and more components as we see fit. So something else to keep in mind is that this HVAC system, when I'm done configuring it, will be something that didn't really exist before, right? There might not be a part number in the ERP system for it. There might uh, uh, I, I could add a hundred uh, modules to this HVAC and might set some sort of record uh, for the company, for the biggest system ever, who knows? Uh, the point is that this is all enabled by a DriveWorks configurator. So in effect, there's kind of no limits to what you can do. There's no limits to how you can approach your product, how you can rethink uh, 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 your design process and, and think about the, Kind of relieving yourself of constraints that you probably have experienced in other business systems. All right, well, I'll stop it there at an exit module. Mesh sounds good. Got a little cheeky preview there. That's nice. Add. They're going to confirm that I'm done. Yes. All right. Well, it turns out because we have all this wonderful access to data, the bill of materials is ready to view. I guess if I were a customer, I might want to check out the bomb. Uh, I can get a real time view of the quote. A nice form letter uh, with itemized pricing, sales tax, everything pre-calculated. Why not have that stuff, that type of information handy if it's all accessible real time? And it's it's accessible because DriveWorks is that core integration technology that can pull all the data from throughout your company together and make it available to the right person at the right time as you see fit. Okay, well, I'm happy with my system, all $120,000 of it. Going to confirm. Oop, they want to know who you are. So I will tell them. Uh, consent. So I wanted to go through the, these final steps to show you kind of a, to close the entire loop here. So here's a nice, here's a dashboard, you could say, of that particular order. OK, and this is going to give us insight to what is happening at this very moment on that machine in the corner, so to speak. Right. It happens to be in DriveWorks's corner in the UK. So, you know, I'm traveling overseas to go get this data. So be it. But information is being created right now, immediately responsive to my requests, unique to me on the fly. We have quotes. We have CAD, CAD files are already being created on the fly. Uh, and because, again, DriveWorks is the integration, uh, 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 has such superior integration capabilities, all this data is just available. And if it's available, why not put it to use? So as a customer, I can see, gee, how far along, you know, when will I get my, my uh, quote in my drawings? Well, you know, we're about 60 out of 180 uh, documents through, so, you know, a few more minutes, right? So just, a, just an example of pulling it all together. Like, what are the possibilities when you have all that data that your business runs on coming together in one place for the right person at the right time? Okay. Now, this is an online configurator that's sort of very customer uh, focused, but you can imagine having similar solutions in place for internal purposes, right? Don't all your employees need to know something important about, you know, the inner workings of your business? Don't you need like an internal dashboard? Don't you want to have uh, shared and common access to certain files? Uh, hey, while it's generating, let's check out this uh, uh, this drawing file is just created. More drawing files were created. Door files are created, so on and so forth. And it's it's going to keep going. We're not going to stay here to the end. Uh, instead, we will move on to the next demo, and this is the kind of compare. Contrast coming up. Let's pick a demo. Very different product. 
okay, in a very different demo. Okay, so there's a bit of a design process here. Let me click start. You know, they want us to pick, kind of make a, again, a fundamental decision up front. Like what kind of trailer do we need? I'm gonna pick one that's that's a rigid box type. Because again, making that choice, opposed to picking the flatbed trailer or the chassis, you know, that, that might yield a different set of questions for me uh, downstream. Okay, and again, this is going across the internet to um, uh, DriveWorks to servers. But in the moment, we are downloading uh, what you can see, there's going to be some 3D content. And this is the big compare and contrast. One of the huge capabilities for DriveWorks, uh, for, for folks that have uh, that do ha are heavy on CAD content and, and have a configurable product, and they want to be able to see uh, that product in front of them, then the uh, configurator like this is exactly what you need. Okay, so this demo, as in contrast to the HVAC, almost the entirety of the screen here features what we call 3D preview. Okay, this is a real time uh, 3D rendering of the product that is responsive in real time to the user's inputs. Okay, so you can see it changing in length and height. Uh, it's going to direct me to the next step, which is picking the wheels. Okay. Great, next step, they're going to orient me to the doors. Great, so on and so forth. We can configure landing gears, light, sidebar, bump, bar, paintwork, so on and so forth. Um, when we're done configuring the product. And so, and so just things I want to point out is see how curated the process is. And it's very evident that there's step one over here, and you go from left to right. Once you get to paintwork, you're kind of done with this section, right? And then your eyes start to wander like, oh, okay, I'm in the configure area. Now I need to go to my summary. Um, and then if I look at the results, and then if I felt uh, filled out more of the customer information, I would, we would end up uh, at a similar place where we see a dashboard of that particular quote request being serviced. <clears throat> uh, similarly to the other uh, demo, we have uh, real-time pricing being shown. Why not? That data is available. We, we know the logic. Why not just show it to the customer right then and there? Or you might choose, you know, your company might say, ah, we don't want to show them the price just yet. We would prefer that when they hit a quote request button, uh, the company gets an email about the inquiry, about the specs that they want. And we prefer to have a sales rep make a call to the customer. Instead of just supplying a price and being done with it, they might have a more uh, 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 personal experience that they want to enable. Okay. So, uh, but having the pricing here is just emblematic of having all that uh, data connectivity um, available to you. Okay. So uh, that's just two of several demos. Um, if, if you do have a configurable product as part of your business, I would encourage you to come here and, and check them out on your own. You don't need to know anything about DriveWorks to start tinkering and get a feel for what it's all about. And again, I would encourage you to watch the CPQ video, and of course, uh, check out a few of the technology demos. <clears throat> okay, well that concludes sort of the, the meat and potatoes portion of, of the webinar. Okay, that, that's pretty much all the content on DriveWorks. Now, uh, when we give this kind of presentation, we feel like most people walk away from this thinking, wow, that was way more than I was expecting to hear about. I came in here to listen to hear about, uh, you know, how do I automate my SOLIDWORKS? And here I am looking at an online configurator showing me a dashboard. That's that's a lot. Like I, I wasn't even prepared to have my mind open to that. And that, that's a very typical reaction, right? It, DriveWorks is very capable. And the point of this webinar is to show you the full spectrum of those capabilities. So. Uh, you know, our, our typical process is we, we go through this sort of presentation, uh, let the dust settle on your end, and then we reach out to that sort of conversation, uh, learn about of all the things that you heard, what, what kind of stuck out to you, what, what's the most applicable to your business, what suits your goals uh, moving forward. And we have a conversation. And, you know, as, as we engage, um, I, th I think we do a pretty good job of recognizing some very key aspects of any kind of software implementation. That's every business, every use case is entirely unique. Okay, uh, DriveWorks is not a vanilla software. Uh, it's the, the places where it gets installed are not vanilla situations. Most companies have, have 
some kind of challenging aspect of what they want to uh, to move past, right? And and so each one of those engagements takes a unique approach, a unique starting point, and each each customer ends up having their very own journey. And we we really uh, facilitate that conversation pretty well. Uh, you know, at TPM, we are essentially a technology company, not just software, but 3D printers and and and, and uh, scanning software and the like. I mean, it, but no matter, I mean, at the end of the day, we are a technology company and we love technology. We love advocating for it. We think it's, <laughs> you know, we like to think it's the solution to everything. And most of the times it is. And so technology is a wonderful thing, but, you know, it's not just like flipping a switch, right? It's implementations, particularly if it's at an enterprise level, are, are uh, you know, not things that you just set out and do, right? They take a lot of planning. They take a lot of consideration. There's a lot of discovery and deep dives and such. And so we, while we love technology, we are, you know, cognizant that it's, it's still a process to put it in place in a way that is meaningful and uh, leads to long-term success. Finally, and probably most importantly, is we advocate that your destiny as a company ought to be your own. Um, and, and that's why we think DriveWorks is the, is the perfect solution for so many is that it really does enable that do-it-yourself type approach, right? You don't have to be beholden to a custom, uh, to a programmer, who a guy in a garage or, or you know, a, another firm that holds all your source code or this and that. It's a solution that you install, you can learn to use, um, and it can grow and scale with you over the years. And thus, as a result, you uh, do in fact control your future. Okay, so what's next? We are going, to, we have a few minutes here, of almost 10 minutes for some Q&A. Um, so uh, Morgan will fire up some questions as they've been put into the uh, question box. Um, I will just say that kind of imparting words that you know, we will be in touch um, after the webinar. We'd, we'd love to just at least hear, get your initial impression as to what you think about DriveWorks. Uh, if there's some things that you want to talk about, we would uh, love to engage with you on that. Okay. That being said, Morgan, uh, what kind of questions do we have? Thanks, Joel. Um, yeah, we definitely have some questions coming in. That being said, we only have about seven more minutes left of the webinar. So if we don't get to one of your questions, we will follow up with you after the webinar and get those answered. Um, so the first question is, how does DriveWorks interface with SolidWorks? Um, equation files, spreadsheet, API, what happens when SolidWorks has bugs they won't fit? All right. Well, great question. I would say, you know, the inter DriveWorks and SolidWorks uses an integration. That communication is, in fact, an integration, right? It's an out of the box integration. It just happens. Uh, you open up DriveWorks, the ability for it to talk to SolidWorks is just native, right? Um, that happens. It, it DriveWorks takes advantage of SolidWorks' open API, okay? APIs, uh, in like the most basic terms, is, um, you know, a software company says, ah, we would like to enable this type of functionality. You know, what? so what you might uh, use your mouse to click save as and rename a file into a new location, just as a very rudimentary example. Uh, that particular sequence of quick clicks that achieve something, uh, SolidWorks says, yep, we want to make that available to the world via an API. Okay, and so to take advantage of that, um, someone on the other end, would traditionally have to whip up some code in VB in .NET or uh, C Sharp or you know an actual programming language to speak to uh, speak to SolidWorks and and control that endpoint. Okay, in DriveWorks we don't do it that way. It's all very form based, uh, using your mouse for the most part to uh, take advantage of that type of a functionality. So the short answer is we're using the API. Uh, SolidWorks. DriveWorks, I'll stay again, is a gold partner of SolidWorks. That means they're very tightly linked on the development front. Okay, DriveWorks being an automation company at its core, uh, they use DriveWorks to test DriveWorks extensively uh, before any release, before uh, they get early access to the uh, latest, the upcoming versions of SolidWorks. Um, and then they also run their automation scheme to test 
uh, newer versions of DriveWorks. So they have run how many thousands of tests? I mean, they have autopilot machines just running tests night and day looking for things to go wrong. Uh, so needless to say, the software is very thoroughly uh, vetted. Okay. Uh, are there circumstances where there's some like glitchy behavior in SolidWorks or the API doesn't work quite the way that the equivalent mouse click works? Uh, very seldom that does happen, but I would say that's, you know, the vast minority of the time. A um, couple times a year, we run into a problem with an API that, you know, we rely on SolidWorks to fix down the road. But by and large, it's a, a very stable um, integration, highly reliable. It's it's DriveWorks has been around for 20 plus years. Um, SolidWorks and DriveWorks know each other very well. I'll leave it at that. All right, here's another question for you. Does the web user interface consume a license? Is this a named user solution? Okay, the yeah licensing. Well, I guess I'll just back up a bit and and describe the driver software in more general terms. Uh, what I ought to mention is that um, there there are various tiers of DriveWorks. Okay, there's uh, what's called DriveWorks Express. It's actually a free version of DriveWorks. It comes with every seat of SolidWorks. It's an add-in that you have to activate. Um, and if you just want to get your the, the juices flowing and get a sense for what automating a, a set of SolidWorks files is like, you can do that on your own right now as so long as you have a seat of SolidWorks, okay? Uh, you will find a limitation pretty soon. Uh, and the next level option from there is DriveWorks Solo. Okay, that is intended to be like a single user environment with, I don't know, intermediate to moderate level of automation control. Okay, so next level up. Um, it actually also features a, a free 30 day trial. So again, opportunity to, to get a feel for what this world is all about without actually uh, committing uh, much in terms of resources. Okay, the vast majority of what I'm referring to is enabled by the DriveWorks Pro uh, type of software, okay? That is in of itself uh, sold in various modules, okay? And that's when we talk about scalability and flexibility, really that comes from the fact that the DriveWorks solution is delivered in modules. So there's a, a development module. That's where all the logic is created, the all the project work is done, um, the develop all the real DriveWorks development occurs there. Uh, I think you're referring to the module called Live. Okay, Live is what takes everything that was created in the development module and makes it web, uh, kind of converts it into a web-based format. Okay, uh, your entry-level uh, purchase of Live comes with ten concurrent sessions. Okay, and so really that just means how many times your implementation can be accessed at the same time. So right out of the box, up to 10 people can go in uh, across the internet and make a quote request at the same time. Uh, how those users got in there, you know, whether they had logins, uh, whether those logins were based on uh, you know, an active directory or based on who knows, you know, a, a, a database of users that are uh, uh, you know, allowed to access the system, we don't know in this, this scenario, but uh, it, it doesn't really matter where the user came from. It's just how many folks can be using the system at the same time. Now, that licensing is hugely scalable. Uh, it could be up in the thousands if you needed to. So uh, to answer your question, the name user is not really so much a thing if you don't uh, want it to be. It's just all about concurrent users, or concurrent access points to the implementation. All right, great. Um, one more question, and then we're going to have to wrap up. Does DriveWorks support only SolidWorks, or are there other CAD softwares that it supports as well? Yeah, for, as far as like actively driving the files, we use the term driving, uh, meaning the ability to take a file, open it, change dimensions, alter features, switch configurations, save as to some other format. SolidWorks is the uh, CAD system uh, of choice. There are components of DriveWorks that can uh, take data from other CAD systems. So 
referring to the the online demos, particularly the trailer one. Uh, th those three graphics came from somewhere, and uh, that somewhere is traditionally a uh, CAD software, right? So you have a 3D CAD model that has graphics in, inside of it. It's, it's part of the system. Uh, those graphics can be saved out um, into a format that makes it web friendly and that DriveWorks knows how to work with, okay? The CAD source for those 3D previews, there are a number of CAD systems that uh, can be the source content. Um, so that's, that's sort of DriveWorks being on the receiving end of CAD data. There are, uh, I think it's Inventor and Solid Edge, uh, SolidWorks, a few others that I think I'm forgetting at the moment. But as far as ac actually driving the CAD files, meaning DriveWorks is pushing information into the CAD system, then that would have to be SolidWorks. All right, well, awesome. Thank you so much, Joel, for your presentation. Um, for the questions that we did not get to, we will follow up with you uh, after the webinar. And also for all of you who attended, look out for a follow-up email from us as well. Um, if you have any other questions or just interested in more information, you do have our contact information on the screen. So feel free to reach out. Um, and I really appreciate, again, you taking your time out of your day to join us this morning. And I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day.